equally important to have these knowledge sessions, right? Where companies, leaders come together and discuss about their best practices, actually talk about their innovation, talk about the roadmap ahead and the future ahead. Today we are here for one such session to talk about traditional food space. For time immortal, India has been the core for traditional food, for processed foods, right? I mean, wars have been fought, we have been invented just for our pepper. So this is how back we have gone. This is how back, this is how back in history we go as far as food is concerned. And that is what has put us on the map and we continue being on the map amongst many other uh, manufacturing uh, products. So let me not take much of your time and introduce the moderator for this entire session, uh, Mr. Sanjay Sharma, CEO and Director of Okla India, to please come set the context and take this panel forward and give us an interesting one and a half hours of this discussion. Please, sir. Uh, thank you, Tezun. And uh, you mentioned one and a half hours. I, I plan to end the panel discussion at five o'clock sharp. <laughs> so uh, I'm sorry we started a little late. Uh, there's always some technical issues and uh, that we need to handle at the last minute. So my apologies for people who are here on time uh, for uh, the session. But as I said, I assure you one thing that we will finish it at five o'clock, right? Um, we have a very interesting uh, uh, topic with us uh, talking about traditional Indian food uh, today. Uh, we all know that uh, Indian food is today amongst the world's uh, top five uh, cuisines. However, when you look at uh, the Indian package uh, food space, whether it is in India or whether it is uh, across the world uh, internationally, uh, you would see that uh, this space is uh, under leveraged. Uh, but the first question that comes to your mind is really what is, how do you look at traditional Indian food? I mean, what is traditional Indian food and what category, uh, is there one category called traditional Indian food? And actually there is no such category called in traditional Indian food. It's actually, when you look at the package food uh, space, it's actually split across multiple uh, categories. Whether it is in the ingredient space, uh, you have ingredients like rice, dal, atta, dahi, uh, paneer, uh, and uh, spices uh, are there, pure spices and blended spices. Uh, you can, you have seen the emergence of this category in the ready to eat and ready to cook space. Uh, the category emerged out of the fact that there is lesser levels of knowledge which is there as far as traditional Indian food is concerned. Uh, then you, the, the big category in this is uh, the Indian Mithai and Namkeen space uh, which uh, is uh, developed uh, by two very iconic brands, one of which is present with us here, uh, Bika Nirwala and Haldiram, we have done some outstanding job on that. With, then you have seen the emergence of uh, traditional Indian food and beverages in the beverage category where you see brands like uh, Amul and Paper Boat and Real Fruit Juices who have actually tried to bring out some of the traditional Indian beverages uh, to the consumer, yet all of this remains uh, relatively small. Uh, you see uh, pickles uh, being represented in the traditional Indian food space, brands like Mother's Recipe, again they are here with us today to share their perspective. Uh, and then we are starting to see, I mean, if you further expand the definition, you see a whole emergence of a new space which is what we call as uh, fresh uh, food. Uh, you see fresh idli dosa batter available, fresh parathas which are coming out. Uh, short shelf life uh, rotis uh, which are available, uh, you have paneer, you have dahi uh, which are all cold chain products so we classify at them under fresh and then finally if you further expand the definition you would see it in the restaurant space and the restaurant space as you know has undergone a huge revolution with the advent of uh, a concept of cloud kitchens uh, and QSRs which are now taking uh, the space ahead. But if you largely look at traditional Indian food in, in, in India and uh, across the world, you would see that the large presence of the sector is in the unorganized sector. But off late with the advent of uh, digital commerce, uh, you have seen, started to see some shift of this coming in from the unorganized uh, to the organized uh, market, uh, largely through 
you know, with the advent of uh, Swiggy and Zomato, you're starting to see many small restaurants latching up to uh, the Swiggy and Zomato bandwagon, and you can get, uh, uh, you know, food from that from those places delivered at your home. Uh, what digital commerce is also doing is enabling smaller brands to access uh, distribution, have uh, availability, institutionalize better controls as far as your business is concerned, and therefore you're seeing many, many businesses flourish. And what we are also seeing with digital commerce is the reduction of uh, barriers to reach consumers. So no longer do you need uh, a large retail distribution network uh, to reach consumers. You can get, latch out to Amazon or uh, some of the quick commerce platforms which have come up like Swiggy and, Zomat uh, Swiggy and Blinkit and Zeptos, uh, and you can reach the homes of uh, consumers. So today, uh, smaller brands which don't have the resources have the ability to reach and therefore, it's making the entire space more amenable and more accessible uh, to brands. And, and that's great news for traditional Indian food brand. We've seen, you know, small house kitchens actually starting to deliver home-cooked meals uh, to, to uh, bachelors and, uh, you know, migrants from North India into South and South India into North. So you can very much access uh, the cuisine. So these are all enablers which are there in the industry. But when you compare the size of the industry and see how much it contributes to the total packaged food industry, uh, you see that a very, very small part of it is developed. Uh, you notice some very interesting uh, perspectives when you study the data, and I will not uh, you know, take Anurag's uh, thunder out, but I will say a few things. A large part of the industry is largely in the ingredient space. You know, it, the, in, the industry is not yet developed very well as far as the value added space is concerned. So you see large markets in rice, you see large markets in dal and pulses, you see large markets in atta, uh, which, which have developed very well. Value added traditional food space is relatively smaller uh, than the Western space, whether it is the, the pizzas, burgers, um, or whether it is the noodles and biscuits in the packaged food space, where in both these spaces, you'll see that traditional Indian food is relatively less developed. And when you compare, uh, you know, your local cuisine versus, uh, let's say, your non-local cuisine, uh, and you go to different countries across the world, you'll always see that the local cuisine has a far bigger footprint than what you have uh, in relative terms in India, right? And so there are, it, it, it is a very interesting space. I mean, we, we, we would have uh, believed that traditional Indian foods would be far more... Uh, stronger as a as a business uh, in India and abroad and in the restaurant QSR space, but it is not. Uh, and that is what we are here to explore. You know, we've got a fantastic panel in front of us. But before I call the panel on, uh, on the table and start the discussion, uh, we actually attempted to do a white paper on traditional Indian food. Uh, and uh, I would like to introduce to you Anurag Mathur, Anurag works with uh, Bain. He is a partner with Bain. Uh, he's an active member of the consumer product retail and the strategy practice at Bain Consultants. Uh, he has over 20 years of experience and he has worked extensively on the strategic and operational imperatives in the consumer goods retail and the retail industry across multiple geographies in India, in the Middle East, Africa, and the US as well. Uh, he has been recognized as one of the top 100 retail minds by CMO Asia and uh, has worked with some of the leading multinational FMCG brands. Uh, we uh, did a pre-study with him on traditional Indian foods. Uh, there's some very interesting findings. So let me hand over to Anurag uh, uh, Mathur first. He will take us through a quick 10-minute presentation on uh, traditional Indian food uh, and then we can come back to the panel. So over to you, Anurag. Thank you, Sanjay, very much for that uh, preamble. And uh, very much like you said, I think what we attempted was to say, uh, you know, this question was also saying that we see Indian food around us everywhere. We see it as the top five cuisines in the world. But where do we see the you know, future of 125 uh, agroclimatic zones in the country, which is one of the most 
geographically uh, concentrated is that you can have. So there is a lot of uh, local differentiation that you can get. A large chunk of the population is non-vegetarian. However, most of the meal occasions are vegetarian, right? While 70% or more so uh, are non-vegetarian, most of the meal occasions at home are still uh, very much vegetarian. But a lot of this that we see today as India's food landscape, we see will change on the back of one big piece and demographics. And uh, I, I've tried to pull out two slides here, but the biggest change that we see over the next decade is the simply the demographic shift. What you see in this pyramid, which was in 2020, moving towards what some are calling the diamond, the rise of 100 million households in the top two layers of this, in the rich and the middle class, is going to shift and drive food, packaged food consumption in the country in a dramatic way. So what you see on the right of the chart, right, the rich and the middle class consume an average almost 250,000 or 60,000 rupees of their food budget on packaged and dining out, which is significantly different to what you see for the lower two. And as you see this shift, this shift alone can contribute to almost doubling this business. So we, we believe the packaged food business, which is today some in the region of about 100 billion, will double in the next five years time. It is growing at, it's already growing at 14%. We see actually acceleration in that growth. We believe it will grow at 17% and the packaged food business will grow and double in five years time. The eating out business is actually growing even faster. So the QSR business we see will double in three years time and cloud kitchens as well in a three to four year vicinity. So extremely, just this shift, coupled with, of course, nuclearization, coupled with urbanization, coupled with more women in the workforce will drive a significant shift in the packaged food and dining out business. And this is, all of us, a lot of us in the room have grown up with the pyramid on the left. We've seen miniaturization, we've seen small pack, we've seen price points, but we are seeing the shift to premiumization. We are seeing the shift to value added. And that's where the question starts be that if the pyramid is going to drive it, there is going to be a lot more packaged food consumption. There is going to be a lot more dining out. There is going to be a lot more appetite for fast food. And there is going to be a lot more appetite for online, as uh, online jing per se, as they spoke about. Today, uh, if we look at, and I spoke about fast food and I spoke about uh, uh, eating out, but if you look at the online penetration ordering in has become again as ubiquitous in, in the big metros. So, close to about 20-25 uh, penetration, we are still at a 10% penetration growing rapidly. So 30% plus CAGR, again, three years will double up the space, right? It's not small, it's growing very, very fast. Given all of this, the question was, where does traditional Indian food lie in all of this? So as we look at that, the chart you see on the left is for packaged foods, the chart you see on the right is for the food services business. The reds that you see is how traditional Indian food plays. So when you see the non-packaged market, the billion I spoke about, almost 85, 95% of that consumption happens at home, happens in the form of Indian food. As you start to look at the ingredients and staples, what I'm usually calling here as primary processed, which is the atta, dal, rice, chawal uh, end of pieces, still continues to go home, gets consumed significantly in the form of Indian food, almost 85%. But as we start to look at the value-added packaged food, Right? where it's significantly more processed, built better, whether it's RTC, whether it's you know, biscuits, chocolates, in different categories where value addition is happening, that's where Indian food starts to lose out. And it is a very, very small percentage, 15 to 20%, growing faster a bit, uh, but a very small percentage of the, and this is the large opportunity. The shift that they spoke about, the size of the price on this, as we double the business, the Indian traditional food can actually grow faster than double. And that is the, and this is where the margins are, this is where the money is, this is where we are leaving it as both industry participants, as well as from a government standpoint, the labor, labor and uh, uh, participation towards, uh, you know, others. So that, that's the big message that there is a large size of price. Similarly, when we look at the, you know, food services market, when you take the whole food service market, restaurant space, unorganized sector, 90% continues to be Indian. But the moment you take it towards the organized sector, the traditional Indian is actually only about 30%. And interestingly, growing slower. QSR is growing faster, cloud kitchen is growing faster, but the full service restaurant space is actually growing for non-Indian. So you see dramatically is, uh, you know, that shift. And, and it, we've seen in many markets, all it needs is an intervention to change the direction of this, right? 
I will not in the map, but the point I was making FSR growing slower, QSR 30 35 percent will definitely double in three years' time, Cloud Kitchen in 25 percent, again, three to four years' time will double. Uh, very, very fast paced growth. So, as we spoke to, and as part of this uh, board, we spoke to many participants, both uh, within the industry, within the value chain, we spoke to chefs, we spoke to you know people in the uh, QSR space, in the packaged food space, in the uh, in the retail space, in the back end of creating uh, uh, products. We said, what's the big challenges? Why is this happening? Why is this not growing? The first big piece that came out was saying, where are the products? They, we are great at creating kitchen recipes, but when we translate that kitchen recipe to industrial food. Are we doing justice? Are we creating the right taste, quality, price point with Indian food to take it to consumers? We, we, as we, especially when we look at as packaged food and we start to take it to consumers, the, there are very few brands who have had the ability and you know, there are several of them in this room, MTR, Nirwala, who have created uh, quality products which have industrialized the direction of the food and is acceptable to consumers. But, the build of that is still very limited. Most folks are still taking that and coming up with a patchy uh, taste or quality. Uh, you can't tell an Indian this is how a laddu tastes, I will tell you what it is. You can tell an Indian this is how a chocolate tastes and he will consume it and he will say what it is. But once you tell an Indian this is what a laddu tastes like, he knows exactly what it tastes like, he will compare it to the first local uh, person that he's been buying. So it has to be created at industrial scale with the kitchen uh, familiarity requires a lot of work in the R&D end. Second is big piece was technology itself. When you go to any of the large QSRs in the Western format, they go product by product and they create exact technology to say how much time does this need to get fried for, how much time does this need to, you know, what kind of fryer does this need to go into, what process does it hold at the back with. If I look at the Indian QSRs or Indian service restaurants, there is still a very large reliance on people. It is the karigars, it is the uh, people who can create that right food at the right end, whether it's in a commissary or whether it's at the end restaurant. But the technology and the processes to drive that clearly is still saying, to saying that how do we standardize and scale? Because it's not that there are not individual restaurants or individual brands that have across dotted the landscape of the country and done well. The question is they're not able to scale. They're not able to create the, uh, the, the algae and build behind that. They still continue to depend and rely on uh, labor in a very large way. I think the third one has been spoken about enough country, I will not, but it, it is growing, it is getting better, but the cold chain network still is very, very far. Again, uh, uh, one of the uh, you know, individuals we were speaking to said that you know, they try to sell into the Bangalore market, where out of 100 retail outlets that are present, only seven are able to, or 25 actually have some sort of refrigeration, but only seven or eight of them are able to keep things like batter, things like paneer, because uh, the kind of refrigeration available is simply not there. Right? So it, it is a long call from what we need, uh, needs a lot of building to be done. Big chunk of saying that, you know, price points have to be kept low. Why do they have to be kept low? Because, you know, there is a market which doesn't necessarily adhere to the same consistent norms that the country is setting up. The same quality norms and standards that are being defined, are they being implemented across? Because that then ensures that you're able to do things at a certain standard and at that same standard, there is a minimum pricing that, and of course, the brand can charge a premium, but if the quality norm is different for different folks, then the unorganized market will always, uh, you know, tend to uh, play in a very different way. I think the fifth one is an important one to me. Uh, there are very few brands in the country who have, I would say, and I was telling Sanjay this time back that uh, I think you know, they've been one of the brands who've had what I call patient capital. When you look at the multinational companies and you look at FMCGs across the world, when they try to develop a new category in another market, they spend the time ingraining that category in another market, whether it is through sampling, whether it's through merchandising, whether it's through simply marketing, because there is a hockey stick to that build. There is a time that it takes to penetrate and there is, as that sets up, and there is growth after that. However, if we look at, and all of us have, uh, uh, you know, businesses to run, so there is, of course, uh, uh, quarterly pressures and builds. However, building cuisine and building uh, food requires its time to be patient. You have to be able to consistently do some of these activities to be able to build this out. This seems, this was one of the big challenges that came out, people spoke about. 
And of course, on the other end, there is a lot of competition and action happening from the international cuisines. There is a lot, whether it's the burger, which is one of the fastest growing uh, categories, USR space, whether it's pizzas, whether it's, uh, you know, noodles in the end, they are doing a lot to make the cool food as non-Indian food. If you look at millennials, millennials if you look at young uh, population, they don't think Indian food is cool. Even the in-home trend is changing there. So that's the question that, you know, all of us in front of us saying, how do we do this? How do we change some of this? And we looked at, you know, in a couple of minutes, but won't uh, drain through some of this. We looked at a couple of other cuisines of how they built. And honestly, this example is not very different, Mr. Agarwal, from what you've done with Deekan Airwala. The cuisine builds in a manner where it first gets introduced through eating out. It then, you know, th there is a build. If you look at Tex-Mex, through the QSR, through fine dining, goes into QSR, through QSR, goes into homes, and then through homes, rigorously gets built into at-home consumption and packaged. There is a journey that Mexican has followed, which is built in this manner, and there are today several large multi-billion dollar brands in this space that have both in the uh, food service space as well as the uh, packaged food space that have gotten created. If you look at something like Italian cuisine, which is another popular, again, lots of large brands in this space, Doni, Bertoli, look at you these. A lot of this has been actually driven by active government intervention, where they've gone product by product, whether it's for olive oil, whether it's for pasta, whether it's for uh, sauces, they've gone product by product and conceptualized the romanticism of Italian food and, you know, put it out into uh, the different markets that they enter and work with. Right? Very different to Tex-Mex, where they made it convenient, where they made it uh, the right price point, they made it affordable and accessible to a very, very large population and grown with it. Right? In India, I think biryani is probably the single uh, product we picked up to say that has gotten to that place where there are several singular product brands that have grown and built into this space. There is standardizations that have happened. There is technology support that has come in that has worked in the space. So it has moved from skill to technology to some extent. It has been uh, uh, created in a, a form that can be accident taken out, not skill dependent anymore. Uh, and there is, of course, growing consumer demand. So you see it as one of the fastest growing and one of the largest. It's still, I think, if I'm not mistaken, on Swiggy and Eto both the single largest ordered uh, individual dish uh, across the country. So there are examples. I think there is, uh, what it really needs is you know, a couple of factors. One, taking local cuisines and scaling them up. Right? There, and it doesn't mean that you have to take them national. Take, scaling local to local is very possible. We've seen several examples of that, both in packaged as well as in QSR, where local businesses built with strength in local markets, uh, command large market shares, command premiums, and are able to build and scale. Of course, taking it out, needs to be done one product at a time. It can very much build through in other markets, but it has to be treated like an alien cuisine in another market. You have to do the effort of taking that into another market and doing something, doing the, uh, you know, all the things that you need to do to build international cuisine, right? All of that uh, very much. R&D, we spoke about the effort simply required to create that. The, the industry is not making, if I can be honest, enough effort, right? There is not enough that's going behind as a, Aja group. There are very few companies who are doing this. Right? You shouldn't have to struggle as much to find a laddu machine or a uh, you know uh, high making machine as you do today. For I mean, you find a dim sum making machine in a heartbeat that will produce in uh, you know large chunks because Chinese cuisine has done that. Right. Uh, however, when you try to go out and find some of the uh, whether it's for namkeen, whether it's for in food, whether it's for RTC, technology development is simply not there. Right. Uh, needs to be done by the industry in combined sort of manner. Sustained marketing, spoke about Asian capital built through this. This is something both that industry bodies, government, everybody can think about and do uh, and build with. Of course, structured bombs and recipes. And I think the last four points are really uh, for the government to think about in some manner. Can we, can they look at really technology focused funds? This is what the industry asked for as we spoke to people, right? Can you look at a technology focused fund that helps to boost R&D, boost technology? Can you, get to consistent application of quality norms, cold chain, and of course, just betting on culinary and food institutions. Uh, in the interest time, I'll just stop there. I think that's uh, broadly I had in terms of uh, uh, building through, but would love to hear the conversation. I think there is a uh, you know larger report we've done around this. I just picked out a few things, but would uh, to hear if you have any queries or questions, please feel free to reach out later. Thank you.
Thank you, Anurag, and I think I request you to please uh, sit and join the panel out here. And I'll call, I think Anurag's uh, report actually raises a whole host of uh, dimensions on which uh, we can further build uh, in this panel. So we have got a very uh, strong panel with us today. Let me start by inviting Mr. Sham Sundar Agarwal. Uh, Mr. Agarwal is the founder, visionary, and managing director of a well-known <laughs> Mithai and Namkeen brand, which is uh, Bikanerwala. He took forward his uh, father's business. Today, uh, they have over a hundred outlets across India. Uh, he's also taken, uh, launched Bikano uh, in uh, uh, 1998, uh, and uh, now this brand is available in many parts of the world also. Mr. Sham Sundar uh, from uh, Bikanerwala Bikano. Uh, then we have uh, Mr. Sanjay Desai. Sanjay Desai is the Chairman Managing Director of Desai Brothers. He is the owner of uh, Mother's Recipe brand. Uh, it's a 100-year-old business uh, in has quite a lot of diverse uh, operations. Uh, he's, into, he's been instrumental in diversifying into the food processing sector with the Mother's Recipe brand. Uh, today, Mother's Recipe sells in over 50 countries across the world. So they have got a fairly large uh, international uh, footprint. Then I call upon Mr. Sune Basin, uh, my colleague. Uh, he is the CEO of MTR Foods, um, which is a business unit of Orkla. It's a 100-year-old brand. It certainly does not need any introduction. Uh, Sune has been um, working with us since 2016, and he's been providing leadership in contemporizing uh, MTR. Uh, over the la he has over two decades of experience in FMCG sectors with companies like Britannia, SC Johnson, GSK and YUM in India and the US. Then I call upon Dr. K. Ratnam. Uh, he is the CEO of one of the fastest growing brands in the south of India, which is called Milky Mist. Uh, they did uh, the boldest move anyone has ever done, which is trying to bring paneer to south India. And we will talk to him about that. Uh, in our uh, discussions uh, further ahead. Then I call upon Raghav uh, Joshi. Uh, he's the co-founder of uh, Rebel Foods. Uh, Rebel Foods is one of the largest internet restaurant company. It operates over 450 uh, cloud kitchens across multiple countries. And under his leadership, Rebel Foods has grown exponentially with brands like Behrouz Biryani, Avan Story, and Fasos. So, he has some footprint in traditional Indian food and some footprint in Western food, and we'll talk to him about that. But, but let me transit from here to there by asking uh, Anurag a question. You know, you said that a large proportion of traditional Indian food is still in primary processing through ingredient-based uh, products. What do you see as the enablers in the environment that will shift this market more towards the value-added uh, segment. So, thanks, Ajay. I think I spoke about, uh, and I would uh, like to reiterate two points, right? One is, I think, the, the fundamental shift in packaged food with that income pyramid is something that I feel that all of us underestimate to some extent. The shift that we will see on in packaged food uh, and the fact that you have a person who's only 30% of his household income is going into food and a large part of that going into dining out and packaged, you'll see a very different consumer. And therefore, the desire and shift towards value added per se uh, is going to be available. Now, the question to a large extent for the industry is where are the right products to solve for that? And I think that uh, that's the biggest piece for me to saying that if the industry can solve for putting the right products. Uh, and I quote an old data point that in India, when, I, when we looked at this about 12 years back, we used to be about 55 SKUs per category. Today, we are in the region of 150 plus. As we go further, consumers will demand more segmentation, will demand more products suited to them. And it's where the questions of, of the right quality, the right piece on the package side. I think on the QSR uh, and the food service side, it's really about scalable technology. Uh, being able to go because India is one of the highest rental markets in the world. You know that creating a rental retail ratio is not easy. I think the cloud kitchen business is doing lots to solve for that, uh, but still there is a l large runway of land to go for that. So I think uh, building for scale 
uh, with offerings across on the food service side and just putting out product offerings with Eastern Capital. Uh, my mind, the market's there, the demand's there, the consumer's coming. It, it's a question of putting it in front of them. Thank you. <coughs> so, um, just to, uh, to warn the audience that we may actually just break into Hindi now, now and then, here and there. So, please uh, keep your minds open to hearing everything. So, I want to ask my next question to Agarwal Ji. Sir, you are in a big way in this industry and you are in the Namkeen, the Mithai, you are in Rajasthan, Delhi, and now you are in the whole North India. 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 What is the biggest challenge you have in traditional Indian food and in your category where you have to sell your products एक लार्ज ऑडियंस इंडिया की लार्ज ऑडियंस में बेचना चाहते हैं आप अभी लार्जली आपका फुटप्रिंट नॉर्थ इंडिया है पर आप सोचते हैं कि ये आप साउथ इंडिया भी ले जा सकते हैं थैंक्स संजय जी ऑनेस्ट देखो हमने अपनी जर्नी बहुत स्टार्ट से करी थी बिकानेर से तो बिकानेर में जैसे बुजिया पापड़ रसगुल्ला घर घर की इंडस्ट्री थी और लोग वहाँ से ट्रेन में ले जाते थे किसी टाइम दिल्ली आते थे ट्रेन में भुजिया लेके आना है तो ट्रेन में कागज के लिफाफे में लेके आते थे और बल्क में चाय की पेटी में पैक करके देते थे हम लोग और पेटी में दुकानदार ले जाते थे और अपने लिफाफे में भेजते थे हमने चानी चौक मोती बाजार से शुरू करी थी तो हम पेपर पेपर के अंदर पैक कर कागज़ में भर के लूज रखते थे और कागज़ में भर के देते थे तोल के वजन करके हाथ के फिर बड़ा मुश्किल था लाइन लगती थी सुबह 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 से लेकर रात तक तो बड़ा मुश्किल था तो हमने इसके का पैकेजिंग करना शुरू किया जब हमने सबसे पहले नमकीन पैक करी पीपी के अंदर तो उस टाइम जब हमने पैकेज में लेकर आए और पैक करके पैकेज में पैक करके दिया 200 ग्राम 400 ग्राम आधा किलो तो लोग पहले लेने को तैयार नहीं थे कि नहीं हमें तो फ्रेश चाहिए पैक का मतलब पुराना क्या तो मतलब इसको लूज से पैक आने में बहुत चेंज लगा थैली के अंदर तो फिर धीरे धीरे पैक लेने लग गए लोग और पहले बड़ी पैकिंग होती थी एक किलो आधा किलो करके पैक होता था और धीरे धीरे पैक चलने लग गया उसके बाद हमने पाँच दस साल चाँदी चौक मोती बाजार और वहाँ से देखा कि पहले पुड़िया बांधते थे हम एक एक आने की पुड़िया तो पुड़िया के लाइन लगी रहती थी भुजिया एक आने की पुड़िया एक आने की पुड़िया परेशान नदी में बैठ के पुड़िया बांधना वाकई बहुत टेढ़ा काम था तो हमने कहा इसको कैसे साइंटिफिक करें तो वो पान परा का गुटका है हमने कहा गुटका उटका कैसे पैक करता है हम लोग फ्लैक्स के पास गए भैया इसका सोल्यूशन दो तो सबसे पहले हमने एक रुपये का बीस ग्राम भुजिया निकाला और उसको पैक करा मशीन से मशीन से पैक करा तो बहुत अच्छा रिस्पॉन्स आया उसका मतलब पहले तो क्या कस्टमर को हमारे पास आना पड़ता था चाँदी चौक के अंदर हमने देखा है चार रुपये किलो भुजिया बेचते थे तो लोग दस रुपये किलो दस रुपये का पेट्रोल फूक के चार रुपये किलो का भुजिया लेने आते थे मतलब इतना लोगों को अवेयरनेस थी तो पैक करना शुरू करा हमने मिठाई बनाते थे मिठाई के लिए लोग दूर दूर से आते थे अवेलेबलिटी नहीं थी क्या तो वो नमकीन को पैक करा नमकीन का रिस्पांस अच्छा आया हमने दुकानें बढ़ाई और नमकीन को पैकेज में लाए और अच्छा रिस्पांस दिया कैटेगरी एक रुपया दो रुपया था जो आज पाँच रुपया और दस रुपये में आ गई 200 400 तो पहले ही था और आज 70 परसेंट मार्केट 80 परसेंट मार्केट टीनी पॉज जो पाँच दस को कहते हैं बहुत अच्छी मार्केट है क्योंकि यूज एंड थ्रो पहले तो फैमिली पैक का मतलब तो घर पर ले जाओ बंद करके रखो थोड़ा थोड़ा निकालो खाओ लेकिन ये यूज एंड थ्रो खर्च करो तो इस ढंग से जर्नी चलती गई और अच्छा है हमने फिर फैक्ट्री लगाई फरीदाबाद में तो हमारे फादर गए नमकीन की फैक्ट्री कहाँ गुजरो कौन इतनी बड़ी फैक्ट्री संभालेगा तो संभालेंगे कोई दिक्कत नहीं है फैक्ट्री लगाई बड़ा हिम्मत करा हमने फैक्ट्री में पैकेजिंग करी तो मतलब बहुत अच्छा रिस्पांस मिला और किसी टाइम पेप्सी को भी फिर हमने इन्वॉल्व करा तो पेप्सी के आने से हमारे को टेक्नोलॉजी मिली 
पहले तो माल फ्रेश बिकता था तो खराब नहीं होता था तेल आया फ्रेश बेचा बिक गया तो लाइफ की जरूरत ही नहीं थी पंद्रह दिन लाइफ एक महीने की लाइफ बहुत होती थी पेप्सी के आने के बाद हमें एक टेक्नोलॉजी मिली ऑयल उस टाइम हमने देखा ऑयल का टेक्नोलॉजी ऑयल मैन्युफैक्चर को पता नहीं ऑयल क्या होता है ऑयल का एफ क्या होता है पी क्या होता है उनको भी पता नहीं पेप्सी ने उनको सिखाया ऑयल को इम्प्रूवमेंट करा उसकी लाइफ चार महीने की छः महीने की लाइफ डेवलप करी लाइफ डेवलप करते ही मार्केट बढ़ गई उसकी अब हमने छः महीने की लाइफ दी तो मार्केट बढ़ी मार्केट बढ़ी तो उसको इस इंडस्ट्री का सबको बेनिफिट मिला जब हमने पेप्सी के साथ जोड़ा तो हमारे साथ क्या हुआ हमारे बिकाने के जो परिवार के लोग उन्होंने कहा यार पेप्सी को माल दोगे तो ये पेप्सी रजिस्टर्ड करा लेगी काफ़ी अल्लाह गुल्ला हुआ था सी तक गए पी तक गए राष्ट्रपति तक गए तो मैंने कहा ऐसे कैसे वो पेप्सी करने को ट्रेड ये रजिस्टर करवा लेगी तो अपन भी करवा लेंगे ट्रेडमार्क रजिस्टर हो सकता है भुजिया नमकीन थोड़ी रजिस्टर हो सकती है क्या अगर एक आदमी भुजिया रजिस्टर करा लेगा तो अपन बर्फी करवा लेंगे और उसकी रॉयल्टी खाएंगे मतलब ये हकीकत बता रहा हूँ संजय तो हमारे कंपटीटर है ना हमारे परिवार के ही है रिश्तेदार ही है <laughs> क्या वो पूरा बिकाने से बस भर के लाए और मेरे को बुलाया इसको से अब राष्ट्रपति प्राइम मिनिस्टर से हल नहीं माना तो मेरे पास आए मेरे को बुलाया तो उन समझ गया यार ये हमारे को प्रेशर लगाने के लिए बुला रहा है भाई क्यों इनके साथ काम कर रहे हो लेकिन उसके आने से हमें वो काफ़ी मतलब इसकी सेल्फ लाइफ इसकी टेक्नोलॉजी हाइजनिक एक बहुत बड़ी चीज़ हाइजनिक ऐसे नहीं कि अपने घरों में नहीं थी आप देखो पहले बहुत बड़ी हाइजनिक थी अपने हाउस के अंदर हाथ धो के जाते थे जूते बाहर रखते थे मतलब बहुत बड़ी हाइजनिक थी लेकिन एक टाइम क्या आ गया अपन अपनी हाइजनिक भी बंद कर दी और आज जो बाहर की हाइजनिक है वहाँ से भी बिछड़ गए अपन बीच में आ गए जूते पहन के किचन में जाते हैं और नीचे बैठ जाते हैं क्या बाहर देखते हैं फॉरन में जूते पहनते हैं लेकिन ज़मीन में नहीं बैठते लेकिन अपन ज़मीन में बैठते तो हाइजनिक ख़त्म हो गई अपन इतने हाइजनिक वाले थे लेकिन उनके आने से हमें हाइजनिक का भी मतलब समझ आया कैसे हाइजनिक रखते हैं कैसे ऑर्गेनाइज करते हैं तो बहुत बेनिफिट मिला इंडस्ट्री को बेनिफिट मिला सेल्फ लाइफ डेवलप हुई तो नमकीन में तो इस ढंग से घुसे तो धीरे धीरे उसका बेनिफिट सारी इंडस्ट्री को मिला और ये इंडस्ट्री डेवलप हो गई आज बहुत बड़ी इंडस्ट्री है और जो भुजिया नमकीन मिक्सर जो भी है ट्रेडिशनल है धीरे धीरे ये मैकेनाइज होने लग गई बाहर से चिप्स की लाइन आई पहले हम सोचते भी नहीं थे यार चिप्स ऑनलाइन कैसे बन सकता है अब देखा तो ऑनलाइन बन रहा है तो बहुत बड़ी बात है इधर से आलू आया पैक होकर निकल गया तो समझ में आ गया सब कुछ संभव है हमारा एक भाई यूएसए गया चार पाँच साल यूएसए में काम करके आया और काजू की बर्फी बनाई वहाँ वो आया तो यार हम तो ये पहले से हम लोग खुरपे में सेकते थे ऐसे काजू बर्फी भट्टी में आप घरों में भी करते होंगे ना मिठाई विठाई वो कह रहे नहीं हमारा तो अपना भी चलती है खुरपा स्टीम कुकिंग है कैटल अपना तो मैं यार झूठ बोला ऐसा थोड़ी हो सकता है अपना कोई चलेगा क्या लेकिन बाद में देखा तो आज हमारे यहाँ भी सब चीज़ ऐटोमेटिक चल रही है कैटल लगी हुई है ऑटोमेटिक चल रहा है सिस्टम चल रहा है मतलब काफ़ी इम्प्रूवमेंट आ गया काफ़ी हमने मैकेनाइज करा है एक बार जैसे इंडिया में कनाट प्लेस में पिज्जा हट आया था किसी टाइम और मैं देखने गया मैं पिज्जा खाने लग गया पिज्जा अंदर ही नहीं जा रहा मैंने कहा यार हमारे तो अंदर ही नहीं जा रहा है यहाँ लाइन लगी हुई है <laughs> क्या यार ये ठीक है अपना इतना बढ़िया फूड है और लोग देखो लाइन यहाँ लगा रहे हैं ऐसा समझ में आ गया सर अभी आपकी जो बिजनेस है अभी हजार करोड़ का धंधा आप चला रहे हैं अब इसको आगे बढ़ाने के लिए आपको वो, क्या वो, वो बता रहे हैं ना वही बता रहे हैं आपको तो उसके बाद हमने कहा भाई साहब देखो जो चीज़ अंदर नहीं जा रहा पूरे वर्ल्ड पे कब्जा कर लिया मैकडोनल्ड पिज्जा हट कोई वो तो बुरा मानने वाली बात नहीं है तो हमने कहा इसको साइंटिफिक करें उसके लिए फिर हमने अपनी इंडस्ट्री को साइंटिफिक करा मैकेनाइज करा प्रोसराइज करा क्या ये काम हमने पढ़े लिखे लोगों को अपने साथ जोड़ना शुरू करा क्या फूड टेक्नोलॉजी मार्केटिंग एच सारे डिपार्टमेंट खड़े करे और प्रेशर भी आया परिवार से यार इतने बड़े बड़े लोगों को क्यों जोड़ रहे जोड़ा जरूरी है क्योंकि हमारे पास तो पहले आर्टिस्ट थे जो बना सकते थे 
कारीगर थे लेकिन ये साइंटिफिक नहीं कर सकते थे जोड़ा उन्होंने आके वो पहले रेसिपी भी जैसे वो लिखने लग गए अरे भाई साहब ये रेसिपी लिख दोगे तो सारी दुनिया ले जाएगी मैं क्या ले जाएगी तो घर घर की रेसिपी है क्या ले जाएगी तो जब स्टैंडाइज रेसिपी किया लैब लगाई और उसके बाद हमने हमने ये टारगेट कर लिया अपने फूड को नेशनलाइज करना है ग्लोबलाइज करना है मैकेनाइज करना है तो उस लेवल पे हम काम करने लगे और हमने रेस्टोरेंट की भी चैन शुरू कर दी मल्टीपल आज हमारे 130-40 आउटलेट है इंडिया में इंडिया से बाहर दुबई में 20 आउटलेट है यूएस में न्यूजीलैंड है सिंगापुर है और हमारा जो पैक प्रोडक्ट है नमकीन वगैरह भी नॉर्थ में तो पूरा ही है साउथ में अभी फैक्ट्री लगाई है और एक्सपोर्ट में सब कंट्री में जा रहा है और पहले चैलेंज था बाहर की कंट्रियों में जहाँ देश, देशी स्टोर थे वो रखते थे उसके बाद ये तो मैन स्टीम में कोई हाथी नहीं रखने देता था मैन स्टीम वाले कह रहे थे इंडियन प्रोडक्ट है यार लेकिन बाहर की कंट्रियों में अब इंडियन कस्टमर की डिमांड आने लग गई इंडियन कस्टमर की वैल्यू बढ़ने लग गई तो उन्होंने देखा इंडियन माल नहीं रखेंगे तो हमारा डिपार्टमेंट डाउन होने लग जाएगा उन्होंने हमारे लिए नहीं रखा उन्होंने अपने लिए रखा ये रखना जरूरी हो गया वहाँ रखने से क्या हुआ इंडियन तो कस्टमर है ही है जो लोकल गोरे जिस कंट्री के लोकल है वो भी इंडियन फूड को ले रहे जब सामने मिल रहा है तो ले रहे और मेरा इसका जो आप कह रहे हो भविष्य बहुत है काम करने वाला चाहिए बहुत बड़ी मार्केट है बहुत बड़ा भविष्य है अभी तो खाली इंडियन ही खा रहा है इसको आज जैसे बर्गर है किसी वर्ल्ड में किसी कंट्री में चले जाओ हर मिडल ईस्ट वाले सारे खा रहे हैं अफ्रीकन खा रहे हैं वैसे ही अभी हमारा टारगेट है अमेरिका में जाए तो अमेरिकन खाए यूरोप में जाए तो यूरोपियन खाए मिडल ईस्ट में जाए तो हमारा टारगेट है क्यों नहीं खा सकते खिलाना पड़ेगा उनको उनके बाद जा नहीं रहे अभी जैसे यू में हमने आउटलेट खोला है तो हमारा पार्टनर है मैंने कहा भैया इसको टाइम स्क्वायर में खोलो अभी तो वो न्यू जर्सी में खोल रखा है तो टाइम स्क्वायर में खोलोगे तो लोकल आएंगे खाएंगे तो मार्केट बहुत बड़ा है चैलेंज है चैलेंज को काफ़ी हल करा है पहले हर कंट्री में हर आउटलेट में ऊपर किचन होता था नीचे सेल करते थे ऊपर से बन के आता था नीचे बेचते थे तो भी आज भी बहुत लोग कर रहे हैं फिर इसको हमने जैसे नमकीन को सेंट्रलाइज करा फिर मिठाई को भी सेंट्रलाइज करा अब हमने खाने को भी सेंट्रलाइज कर दिया पूरा टेक्नोलॉजी के साथ प्रोसेस के साथ तो जो एक्सपोर्ट हो रहा है जैसे यूरोप में दुकान खोली तो कारीगर भेजना बहुत मुश्किल था वीजा लगाना बहुत मुश्किल था तो हमने अब यू में जो दुकानें खोली है सारा हमारा सेंट्रल किचन से वहाँ जा रहा है सेंट्रल किचन से जा रहा है वहाँ गर्म ठंडा करके खिला रहा है एकदम फ्रेश की तरह आ कोई फर्क नहीं है मतलब अपने जो माइंड है ना कि यार अभी तो लोग तो जैसे मैकडोनल्ड बर्गर भी खा रहा है कस्टमर को तो ये लगता है फ्रेश खा रहा है चाहे वो फ्रोजन दे रहा है टिक्की या सब कुछ लेकिन अभी अपना इंडियन माइंडसेट है फ्रेश इज फ्रेश क्या तो अभी हमने समझ लिया हम उसको भी फ्रेश करके खिला रहे जा रहे हैं फ्रोजन ही यहाँ से क्योंकि फ्रेश तो जा ही नहीं सकता उनको खिला रहे हैं फ्रेश की तरफ फ्रेश की तरह इन्जॉय भी कर रहे हैं और आगे बढ़ रहा है और आगे बहुत बड़ा स्कोप है काम करने वाला चाहिए जर्नी है कोई भी करो और मेरे को तो लगता है यू में जितना मर्जी काम कर लो एक तो न्यू जर्सी में तीन आउटलेट खोले हैं अच्छा रिस्पांस है हमारा दुबई जैसी छोटी कंट्री में बीस आउटलेट है बहुत अच्छा रिस्पांस है तो वर्ल्ड तो पूरा खाली पड़ा हुआ ठीक है शुक्रिया जी मैं आई विल कम बैक टू यू विद सम मोर क्वेश्चन ऑन दिस संजय आपने मदर आपने पहले तो अपने ग्रुप में फूड्स को स्टार्ट किया और देन यू you know bought this mother's recipe brand and you uh, started to build that brand in pickles and you've got it into ready to cook ready to eat also what do you see are the big challenges uh, for building a brand like mother's recipe in india hello so i'm quite young in this food business just 20 years but my passion to eat and taste different kind of food and cuisine helped me a lot so when i took over the brand mother's recipe we had around not more than 20 25 uh, 
uh, varieties of pickles. And when I studied, and I knew moving around quite a bit in the country, uh, 20 is not enough. And today I have more than 150 varieties of pickles, catering to all the regions of this country, excepting maybe one in Assam, which is the bull jello tap pickle, which is very spicy. And uh, it is very important that you give the local taste. If you do not give the local taste, you can't go across the country. And that is the main thing. So India, every 300 kilometers for ready to cook also, if you see, there are local cuisines which are there. In Goa, there is something else. In uh, Maharashtra, we have so many different, you know, the West Maharashtra food tastes are different to the East Maharashtra where Nagpur and all is concerned. Where the pickles are concerned, they require mustard oil and some require uh, rice bran oil and, and not also they require mustard oil. So you have to, the R&D team has to go into the various depth of the region to take the local taste across. Like as I spoke to you the last time is, it has taken a long time for dosas and idli to go across the country. I don't know, maybe 50 years. So now you can find dosa and idli at all the hotels where you, you stay and all that. And when people move around, will when they taste different kind of foods, that's how things will move in this country. Thank you. So I'll go to Dr. Ratnam. Uh, you know, your company took a bold step. As I said, in your introduction also, I said, of introducing paneer in South Indian markets, uh, southern markets. What inspired you to do so, do so? And what do you think were the challenges that you faced? Uh, what's been your learning uh, and, you know, on building something that was actually essentially consumed in the north of India? So you really took a extremely bold business decision out there. Um, well, in a... See, development of such products, uh, be it a traditional or whatever we call it as, you know, there are four factors. One is the compulsion. Second one is uh, the plenty, problem of plenty. The third one is the convenience. And uh, fourth one is you know, to meet the aspirational consumers or the, the, the families. Okay. Uh, when I say compulsion, because we had plenty of milk that point of time in 1990s, and uh, we didn't know what to do with it, okay? The founders did not know what to do with it. And uh, the only way, you know, when the milk was getting sold to Bangalore, uh, sometimes at a price and sometimes at a loss, uh, he came across uh, some of the restaurants in Bangalore, you know, they were asking for paneer because the paneer was coming from uh, the North India. So they said that, can you make paneer, you know, uh, for us? You know, that, that was the beginning. So tried and made paneer for the local hotels and uh, the restaurants. Then slowly an opportunity was seen, you know, why can't we do this uh, for the, the, the public, the general market? You know, basically if you look at it, uh, South, as you rightly said, the South is not the, uh, the, the consumers are not of the, you know, uh, the paneer, uh, it means the consumers are not paneer uh, users. It's only the North. But at the same time, you look at them, you know, suppose if they have to make paneer at home, you know, you have to, have a lot amount of uh, the work at home. In North India, the households, it, it was easy because they know what to do, but in South, it was not there. So to give them something extra, because people were there, the economy was growing, uh, there was an opportunity. So it was, uh, the brand was introduced uh, somewhere in 1997, okay. And uh, then one of the, uh, the challenges what the company faced in initial stage was that, you know, how do you, uh, reach this product to the consumer point because it was a short shelf life of three days or seven days, that point of time. Now we give around 30 days or 40 days of shelf life, the first paneer. So the one of the opportunities or one of the challenges we, uh, we had, uh, the company had faced at that point of time, the cold chain. So you build the cold chain, both in terms of uh, the transporting the products right from the factory to the, uh, uh, to the retail point and providing the vesiculars uh, uh, to, at the retailer point. And I must uh, tell you all that uh, we are the only company in India, particularly in dairy sector, providing vesiculars for storing of the products which are required to be stored at four degree or eight degree centigrade. 
uh, other than the carbonated beverages. So we are the first one and today we have a space of around 10 million liters of uh, fresh products we can hold at any given point of time at the market point. So that's how, you know, starting from a few kilograms of paneer in 1997, and today we make about uh, 50 tons of paneer per day. And the market is ever growing. And that's out of these 50 tons of paneer, 60% is consumed in South alone. Okay, 60% okay. of the paneer is consumed in South alone, and remaining 40% goes out of uh, South India. That's the kind of. Uh, so you have taught the South Indians to eat paneer now. Huh? Uh, so say it is. Uh, it's like this, you know. Um, um, with re due respect to all, if a Punjabi family has to eat, uh, you know, uh, idli or dosa, then how do you make that uh, the batter? You know, it's more important. You know, don't you don't have the skill set, right? Correct. And uh, so what is available? That somebody has thought of making uh, idli batter dosa and. No, so send it to the market, okay? Because they have the, I uh, mean, so the interest to do that. They have the aspirational to have idli and dosa, but they don't have the means to do it, mm. okay? So same is the case as far as the South Indian consumers are concerned. They wanted to eat paneer, a good quality paneer, and alternate to, because we also have something like uh, 48 or 50 percent of the population who are uh, vegetarians, you, know? you need you need a, you need a protein for them, okay? The non-vegetarians, yes, you do get a proteins, but where do you get protein? Because you can't drink a glass of milk every time, you know. Correct. So the protein becomes, uh, the paneer becomes a concentrated form of protein. But how to make paneer at home was like making idli dosa uh, in Punjabi's home. So it was the kind of a convenience which has been transformed into uh, converting the households into a paneer eaters. Thank you. Uh, so I'll move to uh, Raghav. Uh, you know, you are in the, uh, you are in a very interesting space and you're doing some really, uh, really path-breaking things in the uh, cloud kitchen market. You know, uh, firstly, uh, what inspired you to uh, do that? And, you know, with the advent of Swiggy and Zomato, uh, we have seen many, many people into in this market. Uh, even in your own business, you've got Indian food and you've got Western food uh, in your thing. So uh, what was the thinking behind it? And, you know, you still see that uh, traditional Indian food in the QSR market, and you saw the numbers that uh, Anurag presented, uh, you still see that the traditional Indian food is still smaller. What do you think is, uh, wh uh, uh, what are the challenges that you face and what do we think uh, we need to do to make traditional Indian food a much bigger space in your uh, sector? Yeah, uh, thanks Sanjay and uh, great insights from the panel so far. The topic of discussion is traditional food, so I must, uh, you know, uh, share that Rebel Foods actually started as a brand called Fasos uh, way back in 2010, which was focused on taking the Kolkata wrap, Kolkata roll, jise kehte hai, to all parts of the country. The founder, Jaydeep Burman, being a Bengali, wanted to take that to all parts of the country, um, and at that time, Domino's, McDonald's, Pizza Hut, KFC, these were the only brands which had scaled up Pan-India. So the thought was actually this, that you know, how can we take a, a brand focused on traditional cuisine to all parts of the country because the only scaled up brands were from different parts of the world. And that's why Fastos was started actually. So very, very pertinent to the topic here. And I don't know how many of you are aware on some online forums we've, we've mentioned the full form of Fastos. Fastos actually st stands for fanatic activism against substandard occidental shit. I'm sorry for, <laughs> for, you know, for the last part of it. It is with all due respect to all the companies from the West, which, which you know, which came in and built great businesses in India. Uh, you know, we've learned a lot. We've learned a lot on how to scale up. But the fact is that burgers, pizzas, all of these were de-skilled uh, in the West 50 years back. McDonald's did this, Ray Kroc and his team, they did this in the 1960s and 70s. We were always focused on, first of all, we were not focused on eating out only. Even today in India, there are 200 restaurants per million population. In the US, this number is 7,000. Australia, China, everywhere this number is 4,000 to 5,000. So we are not, you know, uh, naturally uh, people who eat out. We eat in the house, we go to the right? And this is very different from the West. So there all of this happened long time back and related to the lifestyle, right? Labor support is not there in the family. So, you know, you can't make your lunch and take it. You have to find the lunch near your office, right? So 
बिकॉज ऑफ दीज वेरियस फैक्टर्स इंडियन फूड वॉज नेवर डी स्किल्ड जो भी खोलते थे फ्रेश रेस्टोरेंट खोलते थे जैसे सर ने बताया एंड आई थिंक दैट्स वेयर द प्रॉब्लम विद ट्रेडिशनल इंडियन फूड हैज बीन वीव रियलाइज स्किल एंड स्केल आर इनवर्सली प्रपोशनल राइट Uh, the more skill is there the more difficult it is to scale and therefore in traditional indian cuisines like north indian and south indian if you have to scale you have to find a way to deskill it from the back end deskill it in the kitchen and that's that's the that's the challenge we started a south indian brand called navrasam uh, and we launched it in 100 locations now the dosa batter has been deskilled wo piche back end se aa raha hai hamare ghar mein bhi ab hum sab batter use karke hafte mein ek do bar bana lete hain dosa right 10 saal pehle nahi banate the bread is the only thing we used to come ab dosa batter ghar mein aa jata hai lekin delivery mein delivery mein you know when that dosa reaches the customer it's soggy so that uh, that aspect has not been solved even for mcdonald's ka fries that has not been solved but the burger to a large extent is has been solved for delivery so these are some of the things that have to be solved even making that dosa in the kitchen is is not something that you know is that easy we try to do it with a machine we were not able to get it right all the time so we shut down that brand eventually but in pizza and uh, burgers we have not faced that issue in biryani you know uh, we were fortunate to be amongst the first ones to take biryani uh, all over the country Be- behrooz itself is a 500 crore brand today uh, in present in 350 locations but that actually brings me to the second point first being deskilling has been difficult in traditional cuisine the second being that and uh, you know uh, anurag spoke about it the taste in india for comparison from a cus- customer perspective changes every 300 kilometers biryani in bangalore versus biryani in hyderabad is different versus biryani in mumbai is different versus biryani in lucknow is different versus biryani in kolkata is different right so the customer has a local comparison to make for whatever you are giving him aap unko biryani denge behrooz ki hyderabadi wo kahega meri local hyderabadi biryani ka taste aisa hai mere hisab se to ye hona chahiye aur meri mother aisa banati thi aisa hona chahiye बट बर्गर और पिज्जा के लिए वो कंपेरिजन नहीं है बिकॉज दैट इज द फर्स्ट थिंग दे आर हैविंग फ्रॉम अस ओनली राइट सो दैट कंपेरिजन डजेंट एक्जिस्ट फॉर वेस्टर्न क्विजीन कंपेरिजन एक्जिस्ट फॉर ट्रेडिशनल क्विजीन सो दिस हैज बीन द सेकंड चैलेंज विद ट्रेडिशनल क्विजीन वी ऑलवेज सीन हम हम जो भी ट्रेडिशनल क्विजीन लॉन्च करते हैं उसकी स्विगी जोमेटो पर रेटिंग है थ्री पॉइंट नाइन टू फोर के आसपास रहती है बट बर्गर पिज्जा इसकी फोर पॉइंट टू फोर पॉइंट थ्री रहती है क्योंकि कस्टमर्स को उनकी रेटिंग देना अच्छा लगता है वो घर में भी नहीं बना सकते दैट इज ऑल्सो वन फैक्टर बिरयानी जब घर में आती है तो लगता है कि यार तो मैं घर में भी बना सकता हूँ बट बर्गर पिज्जा मैं घर में नहीं बना सकता राइट सो दीज आर सम ऑफ द चैलेंजेस बट एज सर सेड एज एवरीबडी आर सेड दिस इज समथिंग विच इज डेफिनेटली पॉइस टू ग्रो वी जस्ट हैव टू सॉल्व फॉर डी स्किलिंग वी आर स्टिल लुकिंग फॉर यू नो हाउ डू वी गेट द राइट तंदूरी रोटी इन ऑल आर किचन थ्री फिफ्टी किचन पैन इंडिया वो आज तक हम अभी तक करनी पाए इसलिए वी हव नॉट बीन एबल टू बिल्ड अ नॉर्थ इंडियन ब्रांड ऑफ स्केल Uh, but uh, we've been able to do that for pizza and burger with obviously all the technology that has been there in the west the day this happens for north indian cuisine also i'm sure it will you know uh, go places swiggy and zomato tell us that north indian is the biggest category ordered online chicken biryani is ordered uh, a lot online masala dosa is the most ordered item online so all of this is there but all of this is localized very very localized uh, but that day is not far i believe when all of these cuisines will also have billion dollar brands not just in india but serving the world thank you i think they're very very inspiring uh, thoughts out there and very interesting thoughts out there uh, raghav so i'll go to sunay uh, on this and I'm just going to combine a few things you know ek on one side you are under assault from swiggy zomato and rebel foods also <laughs> who's attacking uh, your business uh, because every time someone orders from outside they are not making it at home right so uh, that is one thing and then the second challenge i'm going to just combine a couple of uh, questions out here the second challenge and and you're hearing people on the panel say mr dr ratnam solved the problem of selling paneer to south indians right and then uh, here we are trying to sell you know uh, take calcutta roll and trying to sell it across india uh, do you think uh, an mtr is such a strong and powerful uh, indian brand so well known uh for for what it stands for is it possible for you to uh, build uh, mtr as a as a single national brand across india and uh, in, in the traditional indian food space and if so what do you think uh, we need to you need to do different something differently yeah so uh, let me take the first question uh and, and you know a lot of has a lot of this has been said so swiggy is a matter um i won't call it uh, call it an assault i think uh, uh, the, the advent of swiggy and zomato is making us work harder i think uh, the role that we have of course our portfolio is very large we have many things in our portfolio but 
by and large, what we provide the consumer, you know, essentially is a means to succeed at every meal. You know, and when I say that, uh, you look around everywhere. Uh, the, the primary caretaker of the house, whether, uh, you know, uh, the woman of the house is working or not, still, I mean, the primary responsibility of uh, putting food on the table is still very much uh, led by the woman. And I think the biggest insight for me when I joined this business was that she comes up for evaluation every meal. And that's a tough one, right? Imagine giving an exam her rose about ke aap subha exam de tiyo, dupair ko exam de tiyo, raat ko exam de tiyo, right? Aur uspe pass hona bhoat zaruri hai. And that's also a very critical role that she plays. She also derives a lot of value from what she actually does. She's also the nurturer. She, she wants to provide for a family. She wants to make sure that her kids eat well. This assault I mean, is not necessarily on everything. A lot of our dishes, we make her succeed and we allow her to do that consistently. And that's the challenge, that's the onus that we take on ourselves. So it makes us work harder to make sure that we are delivering every time and letting her succeed. Yes, but there is a category uh, which, you know, uh, as uh, you know, Anurag spoke about it, as incomes are rising, uh, people are, uh, you know, there is poorer knowledge of cuisine, uh, especially in the new generation. Uh, women are j joining workforce, uh, so there is a need for convenience. All of that is also driving, uh, you know, a different kind of packaged food evolution, which is in a way similar to what Swiggy and Zomato and some of your brands solve for. So that is the part where, uh, yes, it can have an impact, and that's why I think we need a very clear value proposition in terms of what we need to do, and that's a challenge. Uh, but I think there is scope, again, in India for everybody to grow. India is still, uh, you know, less than 20% uh, in packaged food, which is still branded. So in, enough b between us to share the 80% as it evolves. Uh, to the second question, Sanjay, which is about uh, going national again, I think a lot has been said. But first of all, I think we are proudly local. And I have no qualms in saying that. Uh, we, we are a local heritage brand, and uh, that's, that's our strength. Uh, so that's something that we proudly wear on our sleeves. But uh, Having heard everyone, and I think the insights are uh, fairly clear when you go around the table, I think one insight that emerges very clearly is uh, localization. And I was just wondering when Tex-Mex was shown over here, uh, the US Tex-Mex evolution did not happen where uh, Mexican food came as the real Mexican food, right? Mexican food came as something that was palatable to the Americans, right? And you look around in our, in our system as well, you look around whether it's McDonald's ka alu tikki ka burger, yeah. there is localization that happens. But unfortunately, I think sometimes as local brands uh, and very close and you know, uh, to our heart is our recipe and our tradition, we possibly lose the sight of actually localization, which is very, very important, right? Uh, biryani possibly is the only place where you know, some localization is being spoken about. But you look around the world, the cuisines have developed with bridge products. You need something local. When uh, there was pressure on you our know, environmental circumstances, the, we came up with Rava Idli. Fantastic innovation. But what was it? It was still in Idli. It was a bridge product. You took an unfamiliar product that was Rava, but you actually made it familiar with the Idli, and you launched Rava Idli. It's iconic, right? But we sometimes forget that, you know, and we hold our uh, you know, tradition too close. But as consumers, if you are used to a certain taste, you need to walk a little bit, they'll come a little bit, and I think that's where the magic will happen. Uh, so that, I think, is a very important point. The second point, I think, is patient capital, and you know, that was spoken about um, heavy investment. What, what did you say, 10,000 uh, or 10 million liters of... 10 million liters. 10 of million liters of capacity created, I'm sure, and he and I were talking earlier. It's not that... Uh, you're looking to get returns immediately. So this category also needs to be nurtured, developed. And then the third one is, I think, what uh, Agarwal you spoke about, which is about India, you require a very clear value proposition if you want to play mass. Let's not lose the sight of that. India is not the India that we just live in. Like, that's why the 80% is still out there. I think all those three factors will be critical in making sure how you know, somebody can really go national and uh, build a brand of scale in traditional Indian food space. Now, uh, that puts us at sharp 5 o'clock, okay? And I made a promise that we'll shut the <laughs> panel down at 5. So, I have two things to do. One, I can apologize to the audience that we'll go a little bit more. Uh, here, the only challenge is that Dr. Ratnam has a flight I to can, catch. I can stay for, for 10, 15 minutes. 
10 15 minutes thank you so much so then i can apologize to the audience and take another 15 minutes uh, for this because i have a couple of areas to explore uh, on the traditional indian food space now we have a very interesting mix of uh, formats out here okay we've got people who are pure qsr players out here we have Ag agarwal ji's business which is uh, started off as a restaurant made into a packaged food uh, brand this ig is pure packaged uh, food which he's selling you know mtr started off as a restaurant started then became a processed food brand the branded business is bigger than the restaurant business and then you started the other way uh, the question in running in my mind is which is the right way to build traditional indian food okay and uh, it should be from qsr into a packaged food or packaged food into a qsr or both these are important for us to build a brand um, and i'll just throw it open to any one of the panelists out here uh, to to reflect and uh, revert on that so let me just express my view sanjay uh, i don't think there is one route uh, and i'll tell you why and you know we are using the food traditional indian sp uh, food space um, in a in a sort of a larger way but if you really look at it um, there is i am a punjabi living in bangalore okay there is my kind of food and there is a bangalore food right <laughs> and that is that is absolutely very true so when i look at the traditional indian food if i as a brand if i if i'm so let's talk about mtr when i'm actually talking to the consumer in bangalore and i was speaking about how i need to uh, you know make her succeed right uh, i have to make sure that the benchmark of what she has in mind for the product which is a certain kind of uh, you know recipe a certain kind of value a certain kind of output i must actually deliver on that but when it comes to food you know that is unfamiliar which i have not grown with whether it is paneer or you know now north indian chart reaching or some you know india's developing uh, great melting pot pot of very a lot of cultures etc there possibly the restaurant route actually works better because you uh, you go out uh, and at that time your mindset is different you are more open to trying out different things uh, and you are not up for evaluation and hence you are a little more experimentative you try a lot of things your family likes a certain set of products uh, and then you try and explore how to make it so familiar food it is about going in with what is working at home and sort of developing that and coming as close as possible to that is imperative but i think when it comes to uh, food that is non traditional in the local sense like every 300 kilometers possibly the restaurant route actually is an interesting one because that allows uh, people to access and experiment and then it can i yes. add yes please, please. Uh, uh, see uh, yes you are absolutely correct but uh, you know what we call it as uh, in investment term ease of doing business right so whenever we talk about ease of doing business we always say that okay really we are doing a lot of easy uh, you know way of doing the business these days but if you look at it then there is a way of looking at the things ease of cooking ease of dining okay ease of eating okay so when all these things come into uh, uh, under one uh, you know category then i'm sure that you know uh, whichever the route we take you know uh, the food is uh, growing very fast whether it's a being a, i mean the traditional foods okay what is uh, challenging is that you know taste apart making it available making it available at the right time at the right place okay most of the traditional foods uh, when it comes to the fresh foods what you need is a cold chain uh, particularly when you talk about uh, idli dosa better okay it requires a, an absolute cold chain okay? or for that matter paneer for the for the ambient products uh, it is uh, it's matching the the a bit of a yes you rightly said uh, you know you walk some miles ahead and the consumers walk uh, you know closer so that you you make you strike a balance and uh, you know make the product in such a way it may not be universally acceptable to a, every region but universally universally acceptable product thank you so raghav uh, i'm going to ask you this question uh, a, a nuance of that question coming through uh, you know if you become very big and very successful do you see yourself getting into packaged food uh, i think uh, what sunay uh, put 
put as the point forward is is absolutely bang on. You know, as a customer, we know that the three things which, and I spoke in the other panel that I was part of, the three or four things that never change for the customer are convenience, value, and quality, right? So when a customer has tried a food a lot of times, it has become familiar, then uh, then that, you know, uh, I've tried it, I've experienced it, now can I make it even faster at home? You know, then it's about convenience. First, it's about experience. A poha, for example, you know, I can make it fresh at home. I can order it from MTR and make it again at home, uh, almost same quality or maybe even better now. Or I can order it online from a restaurant, right? Similarly, for a burger, can I make it at home? Maybe th very difficult right now. Can I order it easier? And, uh, you know, does it come in a packaged form? Again, you know, very difficult right now. So I think every cuisine is in that journey between convenience, value, and quality. At, at different stages of the cycle, traditional foods are already past the, you know, that stage where now they can be introduced in packaged format. Uh, as soon as I said, a lot of other cuisines are still in the experience uh, zone. Mexican, for example, if somebody tells me that I can make Mexican food at home, but I've not tried Mexican food enough, then I would first want to try it in a restaurant. So I think once that saturation is, has happened from an experience perspective, going into uh, going to packaged and more towards the convenience side might be the right way forward. And similarly, I think we'll le learn for our brands also as we go. Yeah, thank you. Uh, then I'll come to uh, a space uh, which involves the government, right? Uh, the traditional Indian food industry uh, has a lot of risks and we've seen that, you know, Agarwal ji ke ki discussion se agar aap lenge, you have a lot of difficulties for making the right technology and making the right product eventually. Uh, you know, what, what help should, should the government give us uh, to help build uh, the, traditional food, uh, Indian, uh, the traditional food industry in India? The government is very far from health. If the government doesn't do it, it's a very big help. <laughs> हमारी लाइन में तीन बार तो एक्साइज लगाई नमकीन पे मिठाई पे वो हमने हटवाई लड़ झगड़ के खूब मेहनत करी तो वो मतलब वो नहीं लेकिन फिर भी अभी काफी पहले से पॉजिटिव है और ठीक है चलिए अगर कोई अगर गवर्नमेंट मदद कर सकती है तो फिर क्या मदद करे मदद तो देखो ऐसा है अभी हम तो चाहते हैं कि इनको महिलाओं को लेडीजों को किचन से मुक्त किया जाए हमारा टारगेट ये है इनको इतना सस्ता फूड दें इनको घर जैसा फूड दे जैसे घर में बनाते हैं और अप्रोचेबल क्या हमारा टारगेट ये है और हम कोशिश कर रहे हैं क्या तो इसके लिए हेल्थ तो वही है सप्लाई चेन प्रोडक्ट मैनेजमेंट प्रोडक्ट स्टोरेज और कॉस्ट कॉस्ट बहुत बड़ा खेल है सबसे बड़ी दिक्कत क्या है कि हम इसको मल्टीपल करना चाहते हैं पहले तो हम अपनी घर की जगह खरीदते थे घर का बनाते थे किराया फैक्टर था नहीं आज मल्टीपल करने के लिए रेंट बहुत बड़ा फैक्टर है क्या इंडस्ट्री के लिए क्योंकि पैकेज में तो ये सब चीज़ें कर नहीं सकती हम जगह जगह खोल सकते हैं तो एक रेंट बहुत बड़ा फैक्टर हो गया रेंट में और हेल्प कर सकता है जैसे इन्होंने फूड पार्क बनाते हैं ऐसे तो कर हम कह रहे हैं फूड कोर्ट बनाए हर मार्केट में फूड कोर्ट गवर्नमेंट बनाए अच्छे लोगों को दे इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर की बात कर सकते वो डेवलप करके दे दें तो काफ़ी हेल्प हो जाएगी या मोहल्ले के अंदर जिससे एक रिजनेबल प्राइस में या कोई रेवेन्यू शेयरिंग में तो हेल्प हो जाएगी और बाकी तो इंडस्ट्री अपनी हेल्प खुद ही करेगा वही है इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर की प्रॉब्लम है और एक स्किल डेवलपमेंट मेरे स्किल डेवलपमेंट में काम होना चाहिए क्योंकि आज अपन दे, देखते हैं एजुकेशन इंडिया के अंदर जो भी है जो बाढ़ से आई हुई है एच होटल मैनेजमेंट या फूड टेक्नोलॉजी बाढ़ की एजुकेशन है क्योंकि संविधान भी बाहर से आया हुआ था एजुकेशन सारी बाहर से आई हुई है लेकिन इंडियन जो अपनी जो घर घर की ये रेसिपी है उस पर अभी घर की लेडीजों को सब पता है क्या है लेकिन इसकी कोई एजुकेशन नहीं है इसके लिए ये क्या है हेरिटेज होती जा रही है अगर अपन थोड़ा बहुत काम नहीं करेंगे वाकई हेरिटेज हो जाएगा तो इस पर बहुत बड़ा काम करने की जरूरत है कि इसको स्किल को कैसे डेवलप करे लोगों को इसको मैनेजमेंट कैसे सिखाए इसकी प्रोसेस की इसकी आर की इसकी हैंडलिंग की क्या हेल्थ यही चाहिए स्किल डेवलपमेंट चालू करी जाए सब जगह क्या और एक इंफ्रा पे काम करें कोई बहुत बड़ा ये हो सकता है 
Sanjay, you uh, export, uh, you sell in international markets. You know, Indian cuisine is growing. What, what do you think that government can do to help you in making international business easier for you? A lot of countries are coming with a lot of different rules. Our biggest problem in our country is the pesticides which our farmers use. And it is so harmful. And many of our products, what we are eating, are harmful for us also. We face a lot of problems with checking of our spices and all, you know, raw materials, your fruits, etc. And we have to spend a lot of time, energy and money to test each and every lot you get and then export it. And uh, this is a major, and you won't believe countries like Egypt are coming up with such rules and regulations of European standards and all. So basically, I think these countries which are dumping all the pesticides which are banned across the world into our country should be banned and a uh, lot of stringent rules made so that, and education of course, if the farmers are not educated, they can't be blamed. So basically improving farming is a very big uh, portion. Yeah, because if you notice, still 75% of our uh, income comes from farming, Correct. okay? So for manufacturing of other products is still 20, 30%, but main is our agri-product. And the better we do, the yields and all will help everyone and the, pr the chain, the pr uh, supply chain of getting quality products to your, our factories are very important also. Dr. Ratnam, uh, from a cold chain point of view, uh, is there anything that the government can help us? Uh, see, whatever the projects right now, the programs or uh, the, uh, the subsidies are available is only for uh, the expansion of certain categories of the products or uh, setting up of the, a complete thing from farmers to the consumers. But what I would expect is that, you know, when you talk about the cold, the fresh products, cold chain is one of the important factor be it, uh, you know, putting the bulk coolers at the farmer's level, being or uh, the busy coolers at the retailer point, or getting some, uh, you know, the refrigerated trucks. So if a tailor-made programs are available, you know, kind of a thing, you know, for establishing the cold chain to improve the business activities, that should be a, a, a great help uh, rather than making it as a complete project because many of the people, you know, they will not be having a complete project. It's a part of the activities of the doing business. So that, I think, in my opinion, should uh, um, uh, give a lot of, uh, you know, strength to the industry. Thank you. Uh, and I have a food safety department. I have a sample of the sample. And then I have a target of the target. तंग करके या ठीक करके ले रहे हैं और बाहर की कंट्री में क्या होता है कोई सैंपल नहीं लेता है मैंने पूरी वर्ल्ड में देखा है डिपार्टमेंट सब जगह है वो आके देखता है आपकी प्रोडक्ट सही रखा हुआ नहीं रखा हुआ प्रोडक्ट हैंडलिंग देखता है सफाई देखता है हाइजीनिक देखता है कभी सैंपल उठते हुए हमने नहीं देखा और कोई मान लो कोई कंप्लेंट होती है कंप्लेंट के बेस पे आएंगे तो देखेंगे कंप्लेंट क्यों आई डिपार्टमेंट देखता है कंप्लेंट क्यों आई और वो आपका देखता है ये आपने स्टोरेज गलत है कि ये और आपको हेल्प करता है वो और यहाँ हेल्प नहीं करते यहाँ तो कैसे दबोत ले क्या <laughs> <laughs> तो ये आप कैसे कर सकते हो हमने तो कोशिश करी ये मतलब बहुत बड़ी चीज है क्योंकि एक्चुअल में तो उनको गाइड करने वाला चाहिए भाई स्टोरेज ये होना चाहिए सफाई ये होनी चाहिए वो चीज़ नहीं हो उस पर काम करने वाली बात Raghav, you know, what happens in India quite often is that industry is developed much faster than regulations do. Uh, so if you were to seek some help from the government today, what do you think uh, you'll be asking for, for the QSR industry? Uh, I think um, the restaurant industry in general has been uh, badly affected by the removal of input tax credit. Uh, the ITC was a big setback that reduced the profitability of uh, the businesses, the sustainability massively. <laughs> Uh, I think that is something on which uh, we are working with the government and uh, trying to see, you know, how it can be made uh, more sustainable, you know, something which does not pinch customers also, but that's something which also allows restaurants to uh, to be able to become more sustainable and then, you know, put more processes, put more on R&D so that we can keep improving the standards. 
Okay, thank you. Uh, with that, I'll just throw uh, the floor open for any questions from the audience. I, I'm uh, probably happy to take one, if it can come up. <laughs> yes, please. सवाल बहुत ही आम आदमी का है मेरा सवाल एक तो पहली बात बहुत बढ़िया सेशन रहा सवाल अग्रवाल जी के लिए नहीं है वो लेजेंडरी लोगों से सिर्फ सलाह ली जाती है मेरा सवाल राघव जी से और शायद सुनय जी से रहेगा जिस तरीके से आपने ये सेशन में प्रेजेंटेशन हुआ है इंटरनेशनल ब्रांड यदि आके यहाँ पे इडली रवा डोसा अपन जो भी चीज़ें हैं पनीर इसका ब्रांड बना सकते हैं तो जैसे कि यहाँ के जो ब्रांड्स है ये कब जाके बिरयानी जो भी चीज़ें है ये बाहर जाके हम लोग पिज्जा और ये करना तो अपना है नहीं मकसद बेसिकली जो इंडियन फूड है इसका हम लोग बाहर मार्केटिंग कब कर ब्रांड के साथ जैसे आप लोगों के बड़े बड़े ब्रांड्स हैं उसी हिसाब से ऑलरेडी हो चुका होगा स्टार्टअप हो ऑलरेडी बट उसमें कोई दिक्कत है या जी बिल्कुल हो रहा है आई थिंक बताया गया इन्होंने बताया है बीस रेस्टोरेंट्स बीकानेर वाला के ऑलरेडी दुबई में है बाकी कंट्रीज में वो ब्रांड्स जब जैसे जैसे इंडिया के बाहर जाएंगे लंडन इफ़ यू सी यू नो इंडियन फूड इज़ वेरी वेरी पॉपुलर ऑल्सो ऑब्वियसली वहाँ पे कितने इंडियन है उसका भी फैक्टर है बट इंक्रीजिंगली ये होता जाएगा इट्स ओनली अ मैटर ऑफ टाइम एवरीबडी लव्स इंडियन फूड मोस्ट पीपल दैट यू टॉक टू ग्लोबली आप जाके बात करेंगे इंडियन फूड सबको पसंद है लोकल इंडियन रेस्टोरेंट सबको पता होता है हमारे एरिया के कौन से एब्सोलूटली मतलब एटलीस्ट मेरा पर्सनल व्यू तो ये है कि इट्स ओनली अ मैटर ऑफ हम उनको कब ले जाके अच्छी क्वालिटी के साथ उसको प्रोड्यूस कर पाएंगे आई एम श्योर इनके रेस्टोरेंट्स दुबई में और बाकी यू एस हर जगह बहुत अच्छा कर रहे होंगे एंड द पोटेंशियल इज ह्यूज बाहर तो सब लोग भारी पूरे टाइम बाहर ही खाते हैं दिन में आपकी हफ्ते की 21 मील्स में से 16 से 17 मील्स आपके बाहर होती हैं तो कितना वो फास्ट फूड खा लेंगे कितना अपना बर्गर पिज्जा खा लेंगे अच्छे ऑप्शंस उनको भी exactly, सही तो वहाँ पे कोई गवर्नमेंट इश्यूज लास्ट क्वेश्चन सिर्फ आपने जो यू आस्क अबाउट you know say indian company setting up of the traditional foods and you know, say now today if you look at in in, in uh, europe and uh, in america paneer is one of the fastest growing category to 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 all of you you know and uh, when i was in amul i set up the paneer factory in usa way back in 2016 okay and uh, it's one of the growing market now we are tying up with uh, some of the local cooperatives one of the local cooperatives in germany for making paneer and uh, you should all means uh, it's also for your information there is one brand which is known as nanak which makes paneer in canada and send it across all the uh, places so so it is becoming it is becoming famous and uh, and you as long as you comply to the the rules and regulations of uh, the um, uh, the local standards you don't have to worry for anything about it thank you uh, i would have loved to take more questions but i have busted my second time limit also so i must uh, thank the august panel out here for taking time out and coming for this session and giving the insights on uh, this it's been really really a fantastic session eye opening uh, for all of us uh, so thank you very much for taking out time and coming for this session thank you very much thank you everyone thank you panel this has been really delightful every good thing that i could have said sanjay sir has already said that so i'm left with nothing but just a small moment on behalf of the uh, ministry of food processing industry for all the panelists <laughs>